In this example, we will look at finding a Boolean an expression for the switching circuit shown below, and hence finding a simplified Boolean expression for a circuit that is closed when this circuit is open, and open when this circuit is closed. So looking at this circuit here, we could start off by going along this branch, that is equal to Z, and then that part is connected in parallel with all of this section, so that will be Z plus. We then have V bar, and V bar is connected in series with the rest of that branch of the circuit, so therefore V bar and, going along here, we have W bar, that is connected in parallel with this section down here, so W bar plus X. Now X is connected in series with V and Z bar, which in turn are connected in parallel with each other. So this therefore would be an expression for what is shown in the diagram. But is this the circuit we are interested in? No. Now if the circuit we are interested in is called F, we have actually drawn F bar here because this circuit is closed when the one we want is open and open when the one we are looking for is closed. Hence the circuit F that we require will actually be all of this with a bar over the top because it will be the negation or the opposite case. So we now want to find as simplified an expression for F as possible. And there's a couple of ways we could do this. It's often a good idea to start by simplifying the expression under the bar as much as possible. So in this case we could do that by expanding some of these brackets. So it's Z plus V bar times W plus XV, expanding those innermost brackets, plus XZ bar. Then we could expand through that part of the expression by V bar to get Z plus V bar. W bar plus V bar X V plus V bar X Z bar, all with the bar over the top. And the main simplification we could do here is a term with both V bar and V in it, so V bar times V, that will just become zero. So our expression F is Z plus V bar W bar plus V bar X Z bar all with a bar on top. And from here we could continue to use Boolean algebra, for instance De Morgan's laws, to remove that bar and start to simplify, or we could use a Carnot map. So here let's look at what happens if we use a Carnot map. So I'm going to choose to label my Carnot map V for that section, W here, X there and Z there. And now we can put in the appropriate ones and zeros. So first of all, I'm actually going to put in ones and zeros just relating to the expression under the bar. So Z, for instance, that would be all of the middle two rows with ones in it. V bar and W bar, that's V bar is in the first two columns, but to also be in W bar, it must be in the first two rows and first two columns. While V bar and X and Z bar, again V bar and X this time, that means it must be in the second column, and also Z bar, it's only going to be those two elements. And everything else we'll put to be zero. We would usually use the ones then to get a simplified expression. But in this case, we actually have a bar over our whole expression. And for that reason, we're actually wanting to look at squares of zeros to get the required expression. And so in this case, the largest square of zeros, it's a power of two, such as eight squares, four squares, etc., is actually a four square, represented by these zeros together with these zeros. After that, the only other simplification we can do here is that zero with that zero in those bottom corners represent a two square. So finally, writing down our simplified expression for F, looking at the four square first of all, that four square is always in the two columns representing V, 
it is also always in the two rows representing z bar. So that is v and z bar. What about the other one? If we look at this two square, that represents the x bar columns, it represents being in w, and it is also always in z bar. So that is x bar, w, z bar. And so that is the simplified expression for this particular circuit.